Good morning. So we've been talking about preparation uh, in Advent, and um, last night I was under the impression that Father Michael had the morning Mass, and uh, my three alarm clocks went off at 8.15, and I got up to feed them, and their bowls were in the dishwasher, so I went out to the kitchen to get their bowls, and I heard, uh, you know, like, scary boot sounds coming down the hall because it was Father Michael. He's got a very heavy foot when he walks with those boots. Um, Anyway, um, and I see him, he's in jeans and a t-shirt, and I was like, you can't wear that for confession and mass. And he was like, okay, I'm not. I said, said, don't you have confession and mass? He said, no, you do. I said, no, I don't. Like from yesterday at 7 p.m. onward, I'd prepped myself that I didn't have mass this morning, and so I didn't go to bed when I should have, and then, you know, I woke up all, like, frazzled, and then I came down, rushed down here for confessions, and managed to make it through confessions, and then I thought to myself, gosh, what a horrible job of preparation I've done, right? I thought to myself that uh, I was going to feed my cats, and I was going to get back in bed, and I was going to sleep until, like, 10 o'clock. Nope. Poor preparation. So Advent is this time where we say, uh, we, we do not know the time or the hour when Christ will return to us. We do not know the time or the hour when Christ will come again. And we have to be ready always, at all times, constantly. Just a little bit of letting our guard down can throw everything, can mess everything up. And so we have to constantly be on guard to do the will of God Sometimes we have to be creative in the way that we do the will of God. Sometimes we have to be creative in the ways that we seek God. Sometimes that means we have to get our friends to carry us up on a roof and cut a hole in the roof and lower us down into the presence of God, right? These people were so faithful. They were so um, perhaps even desperate. They were so um, uh, desirous to see the works of God that they went to these extraordinary Um, measures to be able to go up onto the roof to lower their friend into the presence of Christ so that he could be healed. Not only was he healed, but his sins were forgiven. And so we recognize in this time of Advent that indeed it is a time of healing, a time of forgiveness, a time in which we are reconciled to the Father so that when Jesus comes again, we may be prepared. We may be ready. We may be waiting for him. We may not be in a a stupor. We may not uh, be confused. We can't say, I didn't know. And so we recognize that this time of Advent is a time for us to really order our lives, to look, to seek, to ask, what is it that I need to do? What is it that I need to change? What can I do better? None of us are perfect. Right, is anyone here perfect? Matt, who are you looking at that you think is perfect? Are you looking at Colleen or at Sally? <laughs> Sally might be perfect. <clears throat> no? Okay. None of us are perfect. Not a one. We can always do better. We can always improve. There's always something in our lives that we can give to God more, that we can entrust to God more. And so in this time of Advent, this time of preparation, let us continue to ask the Lord to refine us, to make us more perfect, to make us more like him, so that indeed we may always 